So, the Assault Class. I've only just started using it in the Battlefield 1 open beta. I've been hooked on all of the other classes and figuring out how they fit into the meta that DICE are trying to create. But it was time to move on and see if what people have been saying is true. Lots of people have mentioned that the SMGs for the Assault Class are very good, almost exclusively, in close quarters, and go beyond 20 to 30 meters or so, and they become very weak. That would be a hallmark of DICE's new weapon and class balance systems, where each class and their weapons have a very defined role to play, and specific engagement ranges and situations where they will dominate. I decided to go full run and gun with the Assault class using the MP18 and its different variants, and gave it a good test to see what's what. First off, the Assault class is really, really fun to play with. The speed and agility of the movement system tied with the light weapons, their accuracy at close range, and total domination really in the town area of Sinai Desert, it's a really good feeling. I've likened Battlefield 1 more to what Battlefield 3 offered in terms of combat, and it's clear to see that right here. Battlefield 3, besides its very dodgy hit registration, was one of the most satisfying infantry shooters that I've ever played. The feedback that you got from the game was almost to push forward every single time you got a kill, saying, go on, go get another one. And that feeling is right back here in Battlefield 1. The trench variant of the MP18 is specifically tuned to focus on hip fire, and I'd say that, along with the Automatico trench as well, these weapons literally dominate close quarters areas on this map. Simply put your crosshairs on a player who's in front of you, fire, kill, reload, done. Rinse and repeat. You might think that might get a little bit boring after a while, but the town layout here on Sinai Desert, with the D and C flags specifically being the two points up for contest, there's plenty of variation in cover, verticality, and hiding spots to keep you entertained all the way through the round, and that's not even to mention the destructive nature of that cover. You can't get away with simply camping the same house all round. People will find you, attempt to kill you, and if that doesn't succeed, they'll just flush you out of cover by simply destroying it. Now one thing that I do want to mention here, as I think it's really important for the Assault players, many players in Battlefield 4 and 3 will remember that when you fired your weapon, unless it was suppressed, you would appear as a little orange triangle on the minimap to your enemy. That gave them an almost exact location of you, and you'd stay lit up as long as you continued to fire, or stopped firing for about 5 seconds or so, then you'd disappear. This made the minimap an extremely powerful tool to use, and you'll find many other YouTubers telling you that the minimap was their main focus during any round that they played, as it could give you so much information. Well, DICE has done away with this in Battlefield 1, and only the physical act of spotting someone, and that's to say using the spotting button on your keyboard or controller, will flag up an enemy's location on the minimap. The Scout class does have the flare gun that spots up enemies, but that's pretty much the only exception. The reason that this affects Assault players perhaps more than any other class is their combat speciality is focused around the close range, inside 50 meters or so. Now you can set the minimap to only show you 50 meters around you, and now without all of those icons of players firing their weapons, the Assault playstyle loses quite a lot of its power. They were the ones previously running around with Assault rifles, gunning everyone down. Now they still have those powerful weapons built for close range, but they have less intel for them to act upon. I've seen a few people complain about this change, saying they don't know where their enemy is, and my counter argument to that would be this. Do you deserve to know where your enemy is just because they fired their weapon? Does the player who fired their weapon, maybe to take down another player that's running towards them, does that player deserve to be put at a disadvantage when you still don't know where he is because you can't see him? You didn't physically spot him, but now he's popped up on the minimap because he's defending himself by firing his weapon. 
Now for me personally, this change hasn't really affected me at all. I just spam the spot button all of the time. I know how powerful it can be when you use it, and it's just a habit now. I know that I'm going to get the intel that I need, and there are plenty of other players out there who are trained to literally click the spot button when they see a player in front of them. I can understand that it causes frustration for other players who have got used to seeing those player dots popping up on the minimap all of the time, but I do think this is something we are going to have to get used to. As an assault player, operating in close quarters, it will force you to be a little bit more careful with how you approach certain areas, as you won't be able to rely on your minimap as much. And if anything, it makes the game more skillful. Reacting to a player popping up in front of you, that pure FPS standoff between two players suddenly becomes a much fairer fight. You didn't know where he was coming from, and he didn't know where you were coming from. That, to me, is a much fairer situation. It might be a bit annoying to begin with, but with time in the game, within the first few weeks or so, we'll all get used to this change. Another part of the run-and-gun playstyle is also the bayonet charge mechanic. Now, I'm largely happy with this system. I think it adds something very valuable to the Battlefield series, and it expands upon the melee combat, which seems to be becoming more and more prevalent as we move forward in the franchise. Although, I do think that the charge mechanic needs a little bit of tweaking. The animations themselves and the satisfaction that you get from taking someone down is pretty awesome, but the execution of some of this is sometimes a little bit wonky. I've been in the situation many times where I'm looking to get a melee kill on someone with my designated melee weapon like the pickaxe for example, and instead the game will activate the bayonet charge because my weapon is equipped with a bayonet. And not only that, but the two attacks, melee and charge, are bound to the same button, which is really confusing in itself and even more so when the game can't decide which of the two it wants to activate. Sometimes I'll be trying to melee kill somebody and it will charge at them instead and it makes me look like an idiot as I do circles around the player and then I end up getting shot in the back. And sometimes I want to charge at someone and it will just simply swipe my melee weapon out in front of me. And that stops me sprinting towards the next objective, it slows me down, it makes me a target and in many cases sometimes an enemy will come around the corner and simply kill me because I'm not ready for the gunfight. Now, I'm not alone in noticing this problem. Many others have mentioned it to me on Twitter, in the comments section on my videos, and over in the open beta forums. And it does look as if DICE may have heard our cries. The suggestion from the players was simply to move the bayonet charge over to a different button. And although we haven't had it officially confirmed yet, DICE appears to have taken that on board. That comes along with them confirming the Cavalry class is getting a little bit of a change where the health of the player sometimes is stupidly high once you've dismounted the horse. That's a bug they've now fixed. They've also confirmed that the ammo packs weren't supposed to replenish grenades instantly. If you've played the support class, you'll know that chucking down the ammo pack, the one that you can run over and pick up onto your soldier, that one would instantly resupply you with grenades, and that just caused a huge amount of grenade spam. They've confirmed that they fixed that for the final game, and we won't be having a grenade spam fest on our hands. Hopefully. DICE do appear to be listening to us right now, taking all of our feedback and fixing the issues that we're exposing in the open beta. This build of the game is much older than the build that they're making right now, and that's being updated multiple times a day. There's still time for you to get your feedback in though, the link to the forums is in the description, so go over there, say your bit, get your opinions out there, and make sure you let DICE know what you think about this game. Thank you very much for watching, make sure you leave some comments below, let me know what you think of the assault class, the gunplay, anything really, and I'll go down there and do my best to read through them all. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.